Welcome back. In this session, we will be seeing how we can install Cassandra utilizing Docker. We will be seeing how we can pull the Docker image. We will run the container. We will check for running containers. We will enter into the running container. Start the Cassandra shell. We will insert data into one of the table and check the data. Now let's move ahead and do the same. So this is the overall workflow that we will be following to achieve our end goal that is to install Cassandra utilizing Docker. The first step would be that we'll be pulling an image. The second step would be that we'll check that the image is pulled or not. Thirdly, we'll run the container utilizing the image. Fourthly, we'll check if the container is running or not. We will go inside the container. Then we'll start the Cassandra shell. Create a key space and a table insert data into that table and check the data. Now let's go step by step and do these things practically. The first step is to pull the image. So to pull the image, we will utilize the command docker pull Cassandra. Here Cassandra is the name of the image that we are required to pull. And the output of this command will look something like this. Now let's go to the terminal and perform the step one. Type Ctrl Alt T to open the terminal. Let me just zoom it a bit. Let me switch to the root user as I can run Docker command as a root user in my system. For that, I am typing sudo su hyphen and type your root password. Now I have switched to the root user. Before pulling the image, let's check if we have any older image or not. For that, we will type docker images. As of now, we don't have any image. Now let's pull the Cassandra image. Docker pull Cassandra. Image is getting pulled now. The image is successfully pulled. Now let's go back to the slides and see the next step. The next step is to check if the image is pulled successfully or not. For that, we can utilize docker images command. Let's go back to the terminal and fire the same. Docker images. Here we can see that Cassandra image is pulled successfully. Now let's go back to the slides and see the next step. The next step is to run the container utilizing the image. To run the container, we are utilizing docker run command. And we are utilizing different options that we can provide to the run command. Hyphen P option, specify the ports. On the left side here, this is the port of the local machine. And on the right side here, this is the port inside the docker container. So, by hyphen P option, we are specifying that 7000 port inside the container will get mapped to 7000 port on our local machine. That is, if we access 7000 port on our local machine, it will hit to or let us access 7000 port inside the Docker container. Similarly, we have bind 7001, 7199, 9042, and 9160 port. Now, the next option that we have utilized is name. By name option, we are providing the name of the resultant container, that is Cassandra. And at the end, we are providing the image we are required to utilize to create the container. The output of this command would look something like this that it will create a container and provide us the container ID as the output. Now let's go back to the terminal and fire this command. Let's paste the command here now and hit enter. Here we can see that a container has been created with ID this. Now let's go back to the slides and see the next step. In the next step we need to check if the container is running or not. To do so, we'll utilize docker ps command. It will list all the running containers. 
and the output of this command, we can see it here. Let's go back to the terminal and fire the same. Docker, yes. Here we can see that one of the container is running, utilizing the image Cassandra. It was created about a minute ago. To end status is, it's up about a minute. These are the ports. And this is the name of the container, that is Cassandra, that we provided here. Now let's go back to the slides and see the next step. The next step is to that we'll get inside the container and to do so we'll utilize the following command that is docker exec that is docker execute hyphen it is the option and here this is the id of the container and we are required to open the bash now let's go back to the terminal and get inside the container let's type the command docker execute hyphen it let's copy and paste the container id here and bash now here just see the change here we were at our local system and now we are inside the container now let's go back to the slides and see the next step the next step is to start the cassandra shell when we start the Cassandra shell, it will look something like this. Let's go back to the terminal and do the same. Let's type EQL SH and hit enter. We can see that the Cassandra shell has been started. Now let's go back to the slides and see the next step. The next step is to create a key space. To create a key space, we are required to utilize create key space command. And this is the name of the key space. And these are some of the properties that we are required to provide while creating key spaces. After we create the key space, we can see what are all the key spaces which are currently present into the Cassandra by utilizing describe key space command. We can see the output in the following picture. Here we have created the key space. Key space is created successfully. And here we have described each and every key spaces that we have into the Cassandra. And here we can see our created key space. Now let's go back to the terminal and create a key space. Let's copy paste the command and hit enter. We have created our key space now. Let's check the same utilizing describe key space command. Here we can see that our key space has been created and these are the default key spaces which are already present into the Cassandra. Now let's go back to the slides and see the next step. The next step is to create a table. To create a table, we are required to use the following query that is create table. Student is the name of the table and these are the columns that we are required to create into the student table that is student ID which we are required to use as a primary key name of the student city where the student lives the fees that the student pays and phone number of the student now to create a table into the key space first we are required to go into that key space and to do so we are required to use this command that is use a name of the key space that is tech framer after this, we'll get inside the key space and here we can fire our create table command. Let's go back to the terminal and try the same. First, we'll go inside the key space utilizing use tech framer command. We can see that we are inside the key space now. Let's copy paste the command here. Enter. We have created the table now. Now let's go back to the slides and see the next step. Now the next step is to we'll add some data and check if the data is present or not. To check the data, we can simply utilize a select query that is select star from the name of the table that is student. And to insert the data, we can utilize the simple query 
that is insert into name of student table columns and values now let's go back to the terminal and try out the same let's type the select query select star prompt student here we can see that there is no data as of now now let's type insert query and add some data our data is inserted now let's check the data again utilizing the select query see that the data has been inserted so i hope now you are clear with how you can install cassandra and use cassandra utilizing docker thank you for watching the session see you in the next one